Hello and welcome to this video on the importance of effective communication. And why? What? What does that even have to do with anything? Well, let's find out. So, there is a saying, <laughs> failure to communicate. It's from a movie, I think it's Cool Town Luke. What we have here is a failure to communicate. So that's kind of a famous line. Um, I'm going to actually disagree with this line, okay? Um, because I don't believe that it is possible to fail to communicate. I think we are always communicating. Now, we are not necessarily communicating effectively, okay? Even if we are saying nothing, we are <laughs> we are communicating. You ever heard the silence is deafening? Okay, well, let's say someone texts you and you say, hey, do you want to go out Friday night? And they don't respond. And they never respond, okay? Well, guess what? They've communicated to you by not responding, okay? Or when someone's glaring at you or staring at you, we're always communicating whether we understand that or not. So the key is to find ways to communicate effectively. And there are some important things to keep in mind that can create us or stop us from communicating effectively. And this will give you some examples, okay? So when I teach introduction English classes, so incoming freshmen um, at the school where I teach. And um, so they, they come in the first day of class and, you know, they've never met me. They don't know me from anybody. And I introduce myself. And this is how I generally introduce myself. Well, hello. My name is Professor Morgan. And this is English, English 111. And I'm glad you're all here today. English is a very important language that we need to all understand and learn how to write correctly. And I'll talk like with the Scottish accent for like five, you know, minutes or ten minutes. And the students are just flabbergasted. And they're looking at me like, what in the world? And some of them are tilting their heads and they're trying to, you know, they're, and, and some of them are fascinated, you know. And eventually I'll say, okay, look, <laughs> that's not really me. That's not my accent. It's not the way that I speak. And I'll tell them something during this introduction and I'll say okay now I gave you an introduction I told you something important what did I tell you write it down and most students can't because they were too focused on how I was speaking that they weren't listening to what I was saying okay um, and so that's the the little example that I give is that sometimes we're so distracted by how things are said that we're not getting what is being said okay and here's another story sometimes we are trying to communicate and we don't do so very effectively um, and it may be a fault of our own it may be just that we're not understanding our audience could be in any number of things. So this actually happened. This actually almost got me in trouble. So back in the day, um, when I was first, you know, when I was growing up, I worked at a grocery store. Um, okay. And there was uh, a young lady that I worked with. I worked, you know, I used to stock the shelves. And this lady, uh, she was, you know, about my age. You know, we were like, you know, in our late teens, early 20s. Anyway, so um, she was very nice and she was always just happy and singing wherever she went. As she walked around the store, she was always just kind of singing. Not not too distracting, but just whatever. So, you know, and one day I said, wow, you really are a wandering minstrel, aren't you? You know, and she looked at me and she kind of gave me this this glare. And I'm, and I'm like, okay, and I don't know, whatever. And I'm thinking, okay. So then she disappears. And a few minutes later, I you know, hear a Jason Morgan, please come to the office. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I go to the office, and there's the the boss, and he says, um, you know, this we have a problem here. And I said, well, what's the problem? And uh, there's, you know, there's a, you know, so and so, this young lady has basically said you sexually harassed her. And I'm like, I said, I said, I did what? And and he said, look, you know, you have to be very careful what you say, you know, especially during certain times of the month. And I'm like, oh, I don't understand what is going on. He said, you can't even hint that someone's on their menstrual cycle. And I'm like, no, no, no. I said, minstrel, wandering minstrel, like someone who goes from town to town and sings songs. So she's walking around the store singing. And I called her a wandering minstrel. And the boss looks at me like, what is that? What does that even mean? I'm like, oh my gosh. So I had to apologize and tell her, but she thought I said wandering menstrel. Um, and it got me to the point where I was, you know, again, apparently wasn't communicating effectively. That was unfortunate. And again, I've learned my lesson. Okay, I just need to make sure that I know my audience before I try to be clever with them. Okay, moving on. 
So sometimes the challenge when it comes to communicating is when we are doing it via writing. Okay, so emails especially can sometimes be interpreted different ways. Sometimes I'll get an email and it'll feel like I'm this person here and someone's screaming at me by the way that it is written. It may be my mood at the time. It may be I just don't, I'm in a bad mood and as I'm reading it, I'm misinterpreting it. Maybe the way that it's phrased. Okay, we can't always necessarily hear voice inflection or tone. Um, we can sometimes retone when it comes to writing, but often emails are very short and blunt to the point, and that actually can cause some problems because people can misinterpret that. Okay, so for here's an example. Let's look at this word, stop. Okay, so this word can mean all sorts of different things depending on voice inflection. Okay, so um, if someone were to send me a text or an email and all it said was stop, okay, depending on how I, my mood or what the context was, I could interpret that all sorts of different ways. Now compare that to voice inflection, okay? So if I were to say, stop, okay, now that's, okay, that, that, that has a certain meaning, okay? Or if I were to, someone were to say, stop, okay? Well, that's like, okay, well that has a different meaning. Or someone were to say, stop, stop, okay? Same word, three different meanings, the ways it can be communicated based on how it's said. So that's something that we need to be aware of. And it's interesting how our technology and our world around us is trying to cope with this problem of communicating via text because they are using emojis, okay? Honestly, emojis, if you think about it, I mean, as writers, we're kind of like cringing sometimes when we see emojis and it's not very considered professional, but emojis, basically, you write a sentence and you include a little emoji after it, that's saying, hey, I mean this to be funny, or I mean this to be sad, or I mean this to be like, ha, ah. okay, the emoji is almost a way of cheating as far as trying to give voice inflection to phrases. Now, I don't necessarily suggest you use emojis when it comes to professional writing, but just be aware that is something that kind of came about and is constantly developing, even to this day. All right, now let's talk about audience awareness. So remember that whenever we present information, we have to be aware of our audience. We need to make sure that whatever we're, message we're trying to get across isn't prevented by um, the, you know, by us misunderstanding our audience, okay? And so I have a perfect example of this, okay? So uh, recently at my full-time job, I was asked to put together a bulletin board um, that basically highlighted what can you do with a degree in English because not only am I a creative writing teacher but I create I'm in charge of the English program at the school which I teach well the bulletin board okay um, so I had decided I, I found a nice um, you know flyer that kind of gave some list of things you can do with a degree in English and then I decided for the bulletin board to put up pictures um, kind of representing these different things like an author you, you know you can go into law 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 you become a lawyer um, social media you can be a librarian um, but I had to be very careful when I created this bulletin board and the reason being is that I teach full-time at an HBCU HBCU for those of you who are not familiar with it is an historically black college or university probably about 98% of the students um, identify as being black or african-american okay so when it came to put the bulletin board together I made sure that the pictures that I put up on the board actually had people who identified as black or African American because it could actually be distracting where you know it's like look these are the things you can do well they're like, yeah if you're white you could do that now that may seem strange okay but in the environment at which I teach these are the kind of things I have to know my audience and I have to make sure that I am communicating and I'm putting in information which is actually going to get the message across without being distracting. Okay? Now, some people are very close-minded and say, no, you just have to accept the way that I tell you things. Well, not really, especially if you're going to be working with people and trying to persuade people, you need to kind of speak to their language. So, as a final thought, remember that often the meaning behind the words can get lost or misunderstood because of how they are communicated. So, it's very important as we think about giving feedback to someone, as we're trying to work with somebody, or even as we're trying to understand somebody,
you know, sometimes restating what someone said to us so we make sure that we understand. Um, and, you know, to be able to get that point across. So, so there's some thoughts about communication. Uh, hopefully that kind of you know, got you to think. And maybe, just maybe, it'll help you communicate more effectively.